1887, James Harding wrote this in the Gospel Advocate. He said, a very large percent of the church members among us seem to have very poor concepts of what a Christian ought to be. They're brought into the church during high-pressure meetings, and they prove to be a curse instead of a blessing. They neglect prayer, the reading of the Bible, and the Lord's Day meetings, and of course they fail to do good day by day as they should. Twelve years of continuous travel among the churches have forced me to the sad conclusion that a very small number of Christians are actually worthy of the name. Those are very strong words from James Harding, but it does maybe cause all of us to stop and to think and ask the question, are we worthy of the name Christian? And along with that, maybe we would ask the question, is there some way that you and I can know whether or not our relationship with God is good? Is there some way beyond mere feeling or maybe a sense within my heart that I can know? Is there some objective ways? Are there ways that we can know that our relationship with God is good? The Bible itself actually encourages us to ask these types of questions. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, and verse 5, he writes this. He says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Or do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test? And so what I really love about that is that, that Paul is inviting his readers, and that includes us down the line of history, inviting us to test ourselves and, and to look objectively at what Scripture has to say about our relationship with God and to see whether or not we're actually having a genuine faith. So let's start out by setting maybe some, some solid parameters, we might call them, uh, about our own relationship with God. And then maybe towards the end of this Wisdom Wednesday, we'll pause and we'll actually read some verses that allow us to test ourselves directly uh, with the guidance of Scripture. So, so here's a first parameter, parameter number one. If you are in union with Christ, if you are in God's grace, you are forgiven for all that you have done and all that you will do because of the status that you possess being one with Jesus. You're saved. You're one with Christ. God the Father, when he looks at you, he sees you enveloped by the person of Jesus. There's a sense in which this is really difficult for a lot of people to comprehend because over and over in the Scripture, and Paul's really big about writing this, he will say, you are in Christ Jesus. You've been baptized into Christ, he will say, on various occasions in his writings. And so if you're in Christ, the meaning there is that you are completely covered by Jesus. Uh, you are covered by his righteous robes of salvation. And Jesus will use kind of this illustration, and it's really a crucial one. Being good is like producing fruit on a tree, but the tree itself is trusting in Jesus himself. So, so there's a difference here. Uh, being good and producing fruit, those are the results of our status of being united to Jesus uh, through his particular work. So we look at classic texts of Scripture like Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, where Paul writes and says, By grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And what about Colossians chapter 2 and verse 12, talking about our, our status with Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith and the working of God who raised him from the dead, Colossians 2.12. And so, Note what Paul writes here. Trust in Christ is the what, and baptism is the when of salvation. And they go hand in hand because they're really the same principle. It's reliance upon Jesus. And so we can't, you know, kind of going back to the tree and the fruit illustration, we can't count good deeds to make God accept us. We don't earn our status before God based on how much fruit is in the tree. That's not the basis upon which God accepts us. God accepts us based upon our union with Christ. And so, 
God declares, watch it, unrighteous people to be righteous. You cannot become good first, perfect first. And so once that status is established, we now begin to despise sin. We now begin to change. So that's a first parameter. Second parameter about our relationship with with God in Christ is that as followers of Jesus, it's so important, we are still imperfect. We are at war with ourselves. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 10, John says, we are liars if we say we have no sin. This is why grace and trusting in Jesus is necessary. It's why baptism is necessary because we are imperfect. We still sin even after we are saved. And Jesus taught us, did he not, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 12, he taught us to ask for forgiveness daily. So we're really reaching into the concept of what the Bible calls sanctification. Sanctification means little by little, God is overcoming our old habits gradually. That takes time. Paul in the book of Galatians calls it crucifying the old man of sin. And crucifixion is a slow and painful type of death. And so if you think about it, this process of sanctification, sanctification is a process. It begins at the point of our salvation and it continues over time as we grow in our depth of trusting in God through Christ. Now, that process keeps us humble because we are imperfect. We are broken. And that causes our hearts to yearn more and more for God to be present in our life. Listen to 1 John chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. John says, If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet we walk in the darkness, we lie and we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus His Son cleanses or purifies us of all sin. Notice, walking in the light is equal to having a good relationship with God. But also notice, walking in the light includes confessing sin. So so walking in the light does not mean sinlessness. It means the continual direction of your life on this path toward God and away from the things that will destroy your life. So the way to know that you're in a good relationship with God is not that you don't ever sin, but that you recognize your sin because light is shining into your heart and you're confessing it. That's what John writes. Here's parameter number three. As followers of Jesus, we can have confidence. God doesn't want you to work. God wants you to have confidence in your relationship with him. In fact, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13 says, John says, I write these things to you who believe uh, in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life, that you can know that. God wants you to possess assurance. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have confidence. He wants you to not have a, a spirit of fear, but rather he wants you to possess a sense of safety in your relationship with and then a fourth parameter, which will lead us then to kind of in, look at these, these various ideas from Scripture itself. The fourth parameter is that the Bible itself gives us help in testing our faith. And so what I want to do for just a minute is just check the biblical data, okay? And we can test ourselves and examine ourselves to see whether our faith is genuine by looking at these passages of Scripture. One of those may be found in John chapter 11, verse 26, where Jesus says, Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And in John 14 and verse 1, he says, You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus here does not mean you believe God exists, believe also I exist. He means trust in God, trust also in me. And so maybe a way to test yourself is to ask yourself, Does your heart rest in the person and work of Jesus? above all other things. Do you say, Jesus, I trust in you? Another way that we could test our faith from Scripture 
is to ask the simple question, do you acknowledge God's purpose for you in baptism? There's an interesting text in Luke chapter 7, verses 29 and 30, where Jesus is having a conversation with the Pharisees about the work of John the Baptist. He makes some interesting comments there. In verse 29, he says that there were some who acknowledged God's justice by by having been baptized. And then in verse 30, he says, but the Pharisees... And the lawyers rejected God's purpose for themselves by not having been baptized. And if that was true for John's baptism, how much more so for for Jesus when he invites us to take part in this incredibly beautiful, uh, life-giving, and faith-establishing moment in our spiritual lives? Maybe we ought to be asking ourselves, (laughs) in the words of Acts 8 and verse 36, Here's water, what's preventing me from being baptized. Here's another scriptural test found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Uh, No one can say, Paul writes, that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So just ask yourself, is this your daily confession to be able to say Jesus is Lord, to, to meaningfully, Confess those words of Jesus as one's Lord. There's some interesting verses that go along with this. 1 John chapter 2, verse 23. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. The one who confesses the Son has the Father also. 1 John 4, 15. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. 1 John 5, 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Whoever loves the Father also loves the children born of him. And that leads us to another test that we can kind of look at in Scripture and sort of examine ourselves. Here's another one. 1 John 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. And so there's a transformation that begins to take place in our hearts once we are saved. There's this idea where we're now starting to love people and to want to be around them and we care for them and we care about them and we want their their best. We want what's good for them. That's yet another test from Scripture. Here's another one. 1 John chapter 4, verse 6. Whoever knows God listens to us. And the us there, Paul is, or John rather, is writing uh, as an apostle. And what he means, I think, is is those of us who are apostles or the authors of the biblical text, do you listen to the words of Scripture and do you treasure them? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And so maybe one of the ways we can scripturally test ourselves is to just ask ourselves, what's our relationship with Scripture? Do we listen to the words of Scripture and do we treasure the words of Scripture, and do we look to Scripture for guidance and for communication from God? Romans chapter 8, verses 15 and 16 gives us another way we might be able to test ourselves and see whether our faith is genuine. There Paul writes, You have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Then he says, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And so the question might be for us, does your heart cry out to God, the Father, in which you say, God, you are my Father. I am your child. I rejoice in you. If that's the case, then that that text says that you are crying out to the Father and the Spirit comes alongside you and he testifies to the Father that this is actually the case. Here's another one. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9 says, No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him and he cannot keep on sinning. That's very important. Now remember, we already talked about you know, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 10, which says we're not talking about sinlessness. But what this text says is your life no longer has a pattern or a pathway of sinful behavior that you're not living out your life in sinful ways the way that you used to. 
So, so if sin is your goal, then you're not going to have a right relationship with God. And that's an important way that you can test yourself. So just to review, looking at all these kind of biblical texts from scriptures themselves, do you believe in and trust in Jesus? John 14, 1. Do you acknowledge God's purpose for you in being baptized? Luke 7 and verse 30. Do you meaningfully confess Jesus as Lord? 1 Corinthians 12, 3. Do you love the brothers? 1 John 3, verse 14. Do you listen to the words of Scripture? 1 John 4 and verse 6. Do you call out to God as your Father? Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. And do you continue in the practice and habit of sin? 1 John 3, 9. These are all ways that we can test ourselves. So, question yourself. Ask yourself, are these elements present in my heart? And if they're not there, develop them. Work on them. Discipline yourself. Hold the line every day. Be disciplined every day. Once you begin to develop these things, you can live with confidence. Meditate on these things. Meditate on the words and works of Jesus. And trust Him in ever-deepening ways.